the longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell Mell. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell Mells are good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. For Pell Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos filters the smoke of this longer, finer cigarette. Gives you that smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pell Mell famous cigarettes, outstanding. And they are mild. Now back to our narrator, Bob Sloan, and tonight's big story. You, Russ Wilson of the Des Moines Tribune have a date with a mysterious voice on the telephone. Your rendezvous? A hobo jungle near the freight yards at midnight. Your mission? To find a killer. When you cross the tracks in the darkness and head for the clearing they call the hobo's jungle, you're scared plenty. Somewhere in the distance, you hear a train. And right now, you wish you were on that train... You wish you were anywhere but where you are, but you keep on walking. And finally, you hit the jungle itself, where the hobos camp. You see the ashes of the cooking fires, bits of cast-off clothing, and tin cans littered about. And you keep on walking. Wilson? Uh, Oh, 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 it's so dark here. You're right on time. Who are you? Your name's Jones, Idaho Jones. I'm a hobo. Uh, why did you want me to meet you out here? I figured it was safer for me. If I met you in town, it'd be too easy for you to turn me over to the cops if you didn't believe my story. I see. You said over the phone that you had a tip on the Carl Andrews murder. Yeah. What's the tip? I seen the killer about 7 o'clock this evening. You saw Freddie Bell? Yep. Baby face and all. Where? Right here where you're standing. You mean he's right here in Des Moines? He was. I just spot him. Uh, long about dark tonight, me and another bow started to burn some kindling, to cook up some coffee and slum. I remember it had started to rain. My friend was telling about other hobo jungles. You know, Idaho, the best one I ever seen was off the D.L. and W. in Air Scranton. It was built against the clay bank to keep out the wind, and there was... Whitey, hold it. What's the matter, Idaho? Somebody's coming. Yeah. I wonder if you two guys could deal me in a little stew. I... Oh, it's you, Idaho. Yeah, it's me, Freddy. Who's this baby face, Idaho? Freddy Bell. Knifed a guy to death near here a couple of weeks ago. Look, Idaho, I didn't do it. That ain't what the Des Moines papers say, kid. They're lying. I tell you I didn't. Don't lie to me, kid. I know you did it. How do you know? What makes you think I did it? Carl Andrews was murdered at half past four, like this reporter Wilson in the Tribune says. And at four o'clock, you jumped the freight we was traveling right about the place where Andrews was killed. You were carrying a knife. And you were in a killing mood. Well? Okay, okay. So I knifed him. So I'm on the lam. Look, guys, I'm taking the next freight south for Kansas City. All I want is a little stew. Eat it, kid. But I'm a hobo like the two of you. Oh, no, you're not, kid. You're a killer. Now beat it. And if you're going to KC, don't try to go by freight. What do you mean? He means not to ride the rods of boxcars. That's hobo law. Jungle law. If you're going to Kansas City, you'll have to hit the highway. It's rides by car. Wait a minute, wise guys. You can't tell me how to travel. Can't we, kid? If any hobo catches you on a freight, he'll throw you off the train. That's the law. We don't want any killers riding the rails. Brings the cops down too quick. The highway's about a mile east of here. Now beat it, kid. Get going. 
That's the story, Mr. Wilson. That's the last I saw of Babyface Bell. But it looked to me like he was still carrying a knife and still figuring on using it. Did you call me right after he left? Yeah. Yeah. That means he got about a five-hour start. You think he's heading to Kansas City? Right. Why did you tip me off to this, Idaho? Well, when the cops find out Freddie Bell's a hobo, that they'll raid this jungle, close it up. I figured if I tipped them off through you, they might let us hobos alone, maybe. You see what I mean, Wilson? Sure, Idaho, sure. I see what you mean. Come on. I want you to tell this story to a friend of mine. All set with those pictures, Hodge? Yep. Got seven different photographs here on my desk. Every one of them out of the rogues' gallery, with the names blanked out. And Freddie Bell's picture is one of them. Right. Yeah. This hobo picks it, we'll know he's not talking through his hat. We'll know that he's seen the right man. Yeah. Much as I hate to admit it, this is a good idea of yours, reporter. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'll let him in now. Money night, home. What's this all about, Wilson? Take it easy, take it easy. We just want to see whether you can pick Freddie Bell from these pictures. Go ahead, Idaho, pick it out. Which one of these pictures is Freddie Bell? Mm. Uh, uh, this here one, this picture, the third from the left. That's Freddie Bell. I'd know him anywhere. Well, Jim? He's right, reporter. That does it. Good. What now? First, I'm going to send out a general alarm. Notify all road patrols and police between here and Kansas City. Fine. That'll give me a chance to phone in a lead. I can just make my addition. After that, where do we go from here? We'll ride along the highway to Kansas City. Yeah? Excuse me, ma'am. I'm on my way to Kansas City hitchhiking. I'm hungry. I wonder if you could spare me a meal. Why, it's a shame, nice-looking boy like you going hungry. Come in, come in. Oh, gee, thanks, ma'am. You're swell. You remind me of my mother. Did you notify the police immediately after you heard that Freddie Bell was in this area, Mrs. Henshaw? Oh, yes, Mr. Hodge. But I don't believe that this boy who had a meal right here in my house was the killer at all. Why don't you believe it, Mrs. Henshaw? Why, he seemed like a nice boy, and he had such a kind face. How's chances on a ride in your truck, driver? Oh, I don't know. We're not supposed to take any riders. Where you going? Kansas City. Well, you look like a nice kid, and you're a long way from home. Come ahead. Hop in. Where did you pick up this kid in your truck, driver? Right outside of St. Joe, Mr. Hodge. But when the state troopers put up that roadblock and looked into my truck, the kid was gone. Well, that's that. Let's go, Hodge. If you ask me, Mr. Wilson, you two are barking up the wrong tree. Are we? Why? Why, that kid was clean cut, a regular fella. He didn't look anything like a killer to me. Let me in, Mom. Let me in. Freddy. Shut the door quick. Freddy, the police were here. They, they told me about what you'd done. Look, I, I haven't got much time, Mom. Cook up something for me to eat. Something to take along. Sandwiches, anything. I gotta get some clothes and get out of here in a hurry. Freddy, why did you do it? Why did you do it? Will you stop it? gabbing and get busy? I'm on the lamb, see? Freddy, they're I... after me, breathing on my neck. Freddy, where are you going? Where can you go? They're gonna get me a, a job somewhere. Some place where they won't look for me. With the railroad, maybe. Working on a section gap. Don't do it, son. Give yourself up. Have you gone nuts? But you've got to give yourself up. You killed a man. You're a murderer. Yeah. Ain't that something, Mom? You're the mother of a big shot now. I'll pick you up like Blake's diamond, Dylan, to the rest of them. I got my picture in the papers. Reporters writing stories about me. A real public enemy. Okay, now, Mom. Get me that grub. I gotta beat it. Still following the trail, 
you and Hodge check with the railroads and find that they're hiring section gangs at Liberty, Missouri, about 20 miles out of Kansas City. On a chance, you show up at the employment shack, and sure enough, the timekeeper tells you he's hired a new man. And just as you walk out in the freight yard, you see baby face Freddie Pell. There's a hotshot freight train coming through, southbound. And Jim Hodge draws his gun and yells, Hey, you, Bell! Come in with your hands up! Oh, yeah! Try get me! Hodge, he's making a run for it. He's gonna try and catch that freight. He's not gonna make it. <laughs> okay, Bell. Try these bracelets on for size. I could have made it! I could have made it! See? Why didn't you, baby face? Afraid he might have gotten you with a second shot? I... I, I... A lot different when you're on the receiving end, isn't it, kid? All right, let's go, Wilson. Right. We get the flyer back to Des Moines, we hurry. The flyer? Ain't that a, a Pullman? That's right, baby face. Why? That's funny. That's real funny. What's so funny? When I was riding the boxcars, I swore that someday I'd be a, a big shot and ride the Pullman first class. Here I am, a big shot with my picture in all the papers, and, and riding a Pullman car first class, just as I said I would. Yeah. <laughs> 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 In just a moment, we'll read you a telegram from Russ Wilson with the final outcome of tonight's big story. Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell Mells are good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. <laughs> we read you that telegram from Russ Wilson of the Des Moines Tribune. Youthful killer in tonight's big story was brought to trial, convicted of murder, and sentenced to life imprisonment in the Iowa State Penitentiary. Ten years later, he made a daring escape from prison, but after several weeks at liberty, he voluntarily returned to jail and is now serving out his sentence. Many thanks for tonight's Pell Mell Award. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. The makers of Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes are proud to have named you the winner of the Pell Mell $500 Award for notable service in the field of journalism. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes will present another big story. A big story from the pages of the Nashville Banner. Byline, Marshall Morgan. A big story about two penniless parents and a reporter who saw to it that two children got what they wanted for Christmas. The Big Story is produced by Bernard J. Proctor and directed by Harry Ingram with music by Vladimir Selinsky. Tonight's program was written by Max Ehrlich. Your narrator was Bob Sloan and George Petrie played the part of Russ Wilson. All names in tonight's story except that of Mr. Wilson were fictitious, but the dramatization was based on a true and authentic case. This is Ernest Chappell speaking for the makers of Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.